ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about monitors. Now I know I previously made a video talking about them, and that was more to do with like which GPU is right for which monitor type. Whereas in this one, I just want to talk about the monitors themselves and sort of which ones are better for which type of people out there. I'm lucky enough to have been able to test pretty much every different type of monitor there is out of all the main types anyway, which is what I'll be discussing in this video. Uh, but most of you guys probably haven't been able to do that, at least for a significant amount of time. Maybe you've been to a computer shop or something, you've had a bit of a play around but you, you haven't actually been using one for like a week or more uh, where I have had that ability. So I just want to give an idea on which monitors sort of come to mind for which kind of users. And this is an unscripted video, by the way. I'm just going to talk to you guys from my personal experience. But first, we need to talk about today's sponsor, which is ekoffers.com. So this is a great website if you're looking to grab a uh, Windows license, maybe you change motherboards or something like that, you need to grab that. Uh, maybe you're looking for Microsoft Office. Uh, they got plenty of other deals there. I'll put the links in the description down below, so check them out. Support who supports me. Now, I also just want to say, if you haven't checked out my second episode of Hardware Legends, so this is a new series that I started. The idea is that we look back at the past and check out legendary hardware, both legendary for good or bad reasons. So episode one, we did the FX 9590, and then in episode two, which I put out previously, it's my previous video to this one, uh, we did the R9 290, which is probably one of the best value for money graphics cards that's ever been released. And it's my personal favorite GPU because it's what started this channel. So let's talk about the monitors then. And we'll start with the one most people use, a 1080p monitor running at 60 hertz. So this is like the standard monitor and it has been the standard one for quite some time now. We are seeing more and more shifts and this will continue moving forward with people going towards uh, higher resolution displays, uh, higher refresh rate displays. But as of right now, the 1080p 60 monitor is, is the main one most people use. So I don't really need to talk about it because it's kind of like the standard. I don't know what else to say. I would say if you're looking to buy a monitor, um, maybe you're just building your first PC, that's kind of like the minimum you would ever want to go for. You wouldn't want to go for something lesser than that. But finding anything lesser than that nowadays would be pretty difficult. So we can kind of skip over that. But then we can talk about the 1080p higher refresh rate monitors. So you'll see quite a few out there now, and there's a range. So you'll see some that are like 75 hertz, some that are 90, maybe some that are 100. Uh, there's a lot that are 120, 144, and then we're seeing ones up to like 240 now. So I don't want to get into like what all the differences between them specifically. Basically, as you go up with the refresh rates, it will just make it smoother because uh, you're seeing more frames on the screen. So it just looks smoother. If you, if you use them back to back, you notice it instantly. If you have like a 120 hertz display or something and you go into Windows and you set it down to 60 and then use it, you just instantly know. Enthusiasts like myself and probably many of you guys can tell pretty easily just by dragging a mouse cursor around on the desktop, you can pretty quickly tell if you're using a high refresh rate monitor. So I think the, the 75 hertz ones, 75, 90 hertz, those ones, you can usually get ones like that for quite cheap. Now it's not like a huge upgrade over a 60 hertz 1080p display, but it's decent, especially the 90 ones. That's getting up there, and and it does make a bit of a difference. But if you're more serious about it, I would say going towards the 120, 144 hertz ones. Uh, those would be the main ones I would go for, and the type of person I would recommend them for. If you're just playing sort of slow paced games or things like that, like I guess a strategy game or something along those lines, then I probably wouldn't recommend them. I would very much recommend them for those who are playing FPS shooters. So maybe you play Rainbow Six Siege, maybe you play Counter-Strike. Those types of games are really where you're gonna see the benefits from having the higher refresh rate monitors. Uh, this is something I've definitely noticed over the years when I've been testing out higher refresh rate monitors, say 1080p ones, and uh, I've, I've gone to play a game, a shooter game like Counter-Strike or something like that, and then I've switched back to a 60 hertz one and I just noticed it's just not quite as good. 
it's just a better overall experience in terms of it's more fun for you it looks better but I also think it gives you a bit more of a competitive advantage because it's much smoother and you'll notice that a lot of pro first person shooter gamers out there will pretty much they all run high refresh rate monitors so uh, high refresh rate 1080p monitors at that so that's who I would say they primarily are good for there also will be nice for other games as well. It's not like that's the only thing they can be used for. Certainly all your other games that you play, all your AAA title ones, adventure games, other things, um, third person shooters, all those, it'll all look better uh, on those high refresh rate monitors. So I would say if you're a person that uh, maybe doesn't have an extremely powerful GPU, you maybe got something that's more in the mid range type thing, and you're looking for a nice monitor to upgrade to, that's probably where I would head. If you're just doing purely gaming and that's all you're doing, no productivity stuff, nothing else, just gaming and, you know, casual stuff, uh, then that's what I would trend towards. One of those 1080p, 120 hertz, 144 hertz, something like that, 165 maybe. Those are what I would go for and, and that's where I think you would have the better experience. Then going up to 1440p, I know I will speak about ultra wides as well, but that's sort of separately. 1440p, so 1440p 60 or 75 hertz for that matter these are ones that I see for more people that want to be doing a little bit of productivity as well of course you get that nicer resolution it's a bit more crispy but with with 1440p you get that extra screen real estate that's always nice it's always a good thing and uh, the games do look better although remember you will need a decent amount of horsepower for them as well but but maybe not so much more than what you would need to say drive a 1080p higher fresh rate monitor also so they're kind of equal in those terms so 1440p 60 hertz monitors aren't particularly popular they're actually kind of difficult to find so not that many people actually run them but they are good uh, for those that just want a bit more screen real estate and uh, they don't really want to jump all the way up to 4K for whatever reason. Uh, even though a lot of 4K 60 panels, uh, the monitors these days are actually quite cheap. So it's it's for those people really. The main one that I see people upgrade to, especially enthusiasts, are the 1440p high refresh rate monitors. These are your 1440p ones. Uh, they're usually like 27 inch, 28 inch, something like that. And they're 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 165, something like that. These monitors, to me anyway, in all my years uh, testing monitors and reviewing tech, these are my absolute favorite by far. And I've talked to quite a few other tech YouTubers, and a lot of them agree that 1440p high refresh rate is kind of like the best experience. You'll need a pretty powerful graphics card for it, though. I'll definitely say that. You're definitely going to need an enthusiast-grade graphics card for it, so something pretty up there in terms of power because uh, to get the most out of them anyway. Often these monitors will come with uh, G-Sync and, and things like that, uh, FreeSync as well now. And so they're, they're just a very, very good experience. You get the screen real estate, but mainly just for gaming, it, you get the crispiness that comes with 1440p, but also you get that high refresh rate and it's just a really good experience. It's just the, my best sort of gaming experiences have always been in terms of monitors have always been with that. It's one of those things that's quite personal. It's kind of hard to uh, articulate it for you guys, but I would just say in terms of the actual experience itself, it's it's the best. Um, it's very nice, regardless of which games you're playing. Obviously, playing something it's like get like Civilization or something, you're probably not going to see a huge amount of benefit from it. Uh, maybe from the screen real estate, maybe, but but uh, first person shooters or any of the AAA like adventure games or things like that, they're going to be really really good for it. And so. I would say if you are a person that is has a decent amount of money because you're going to need a pretty powerful rig, especially a powerful GPU to drive it, uh, you already have an enthusiast GPU, maybe you got a 2080, maybe you got a uh, Radeon 7 or something like that, um, then, then you can trend towards that monitor and I think you'll have a very, very good gaming experience uh, with them. As far as ultra-wides go, uh, you can have obviously the 1080p ultra wides, 1440p ultra wides are very popular, like 3440 by 1440p ones. Those are increasingly popular these days. I would say these are very much for people that would be normally running dual monitors together, but they just hate, you know, the bezels in the way, which is what, you know, everyone hates with dual monitors having the bezels. 
um especially if you're planning on playing a game across the monitors it's sort of different if you have them two sort of separate ones and you just have one thing on one monitor and something on the other like how streamers often set it up but if you were looking to have a more surround gaming experience with either two or three monitors then having the bezels really does kind of ruin it and that's why you're seeing the popularity now especially of curved uh, ultra wide monitors so these are good for uh, definitely very good for those uh, doing productivity stuff you get huge amount of screen real estate that's one of the biggest benefits with them uh, so if you are someone that's doing a lot of productivity then getting an ultra wide is very very good for that and for gamers looking for a more immersive sort of all-around experience it's good for those people as well once again you are going to need quite a bit of graphics power that's if you're gaming uh, to drive them if you're just purely doing productivity stuff that'll be less of a factor although there's other benefits from running higher-end gpus depending on what you're doing but for the most part if you're if you're gaming with an ultra wide especially a 1440p one yeah you're going to need some uh, serious gpu power there to get the most out of it and often these are also high refresh rate in many cases which is going to mean you're going to need even more power but these can be a very good sort of immersive surrounding experience for gaming and for productivity they're very nice for me personally i don't like them as much as a single 1440p uh high refresh rate monitor simply this is just personal opinion simply because i'm not a huge fan of the whole sort of like immersion thing not because there's anything wrong with it uh it's just that for me if we can be quite overwhelming to me and uh, I, I don't really like it and for certain games I kind of like to be able to see everything on the screen without having to like move my head because these are often 34 inches uh, you might have to sort of move to look at everything if there's sort of information on the edges of the screen in certain games so for me that that's why I kind of lean more towards sort of just the standard uh, 1440p high refresh rate monitor but for plenty of other people, they really do like the ultra wides, and, and it's a very good monitor for them. So then we move up to 4K monitors. This is what I personally run, a 4K 60 hertz monitor. I wouldn't say these are super popular, but they are increasing in popularity. And the, bizarrely, they can actually be had quite cheaply by comparison to the previous two we talked about, especially in, in the sense of the high refresh rate 1440p or higher refresh rate ultra wides. Uh, 4k 60 hertz monitors are actually not too bad these days you can pick up a lot of them for quite cheap now these primarily i would say are for people like me who are doing sort of 50 percent productivity 50 percent gaming although lately it's been a lot more than 50 percent on the productivity side uh but the, the the main reason for this is because you just get a tremendous amount of screen real estate so like for me i can have a full 1080p uh, preview for my video when I'm doing video editing in one of the corners and just one quarter and you know it's full 1080p as well and then I can be doing using the other three quarters of the display for all my other stuff in Vegas uh, so that's like the main benefit there for productivity you just get a tremendous amount of screen real estate which is very very good also for consuming content especially now that many things like Netflix support 4k videos and that so 4k in your movies and things like that uh, that's also very nice to get all that crispiness when you watch stuff like that uh, if you do watch it on your computer and with gaming it's it's becoming more viable these these types of things can be quite a lot of games now like triple a games are tough to run at like 4k with high settings i mean i've got a 2080 in the rig uh, with my 9900k and it's it's still difficult to run and i have to drop down settings uh there's a whole argument with do you need filters or not most of the time i just knock them off but uh that's sort of separate so i would say that's primarily who should be going for the 4k stuff i would say if you're just just doing gaming that's all you're doing nothing else uh i would if if that's all i was doing i would go with the 1440p high refresh rate personally that's what i would do even if i was running you know high-end enthusiast gpus like what i do with the 2080 that's what i would trend towards personally if all i was doing was gaming however if you're doing productivity stuff as well there's a lot of advantages with going with a 4k display so i hope that kind of rounds it up for you guys i know this video is a little bit on the longer side i just wanted to do this sort of off script talking about experiences but i this is only my personal sort of opinions and experiences so i want to throw it to you guys after you've heard everything in this video 
What do you think? What monitor, what monitor I should say, do you currently run? And what do you think about what I said in this video? Do you agree about like 1440p high refresh rate being sort of the main good one for gamers like the ultimate or do you think it's something else? And what do you think of 4K ultra wides, all of that? I want to know in the comment section down below, let me know what you think, what your opinions are on all this because it's a big subject and lots of people have talked about it. Um, but these are sort of the main ones I would say going now and going forward that people will generally be trending towards in terms of what they may be buying. So that's kind of why I made the video talking about these ones in particular. I thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already because it makes Teddy very happy and I'll see you all next time.